Welcome to the third chapter of this course. In this chapter, we will be going through all the organizational and warehouse structures that need to be created for the end-to-end -end scenarios we will be building. During our introduction session, we already had a quick look at the different organizational structures used in extended warehouse management. During this lesson, we will be examining all the key settings related to the different structures in a detailed level. The highest level organizational structure in EWM is the warehouse code. But before we check how warehouse codes are created in EWM, let's take a quick look at the organizational structures I will be using in S4HANA. As we will see during this chapter, the different organizational elements between S4 and EWM are closely connected. I open the IMG configuration structure and then select the Enterprise Structure folder. From here, I select Definition, then Logistics Execution, and then Define Warehouse Number. Here you can see the S4 warehouse number I will be using. I strongly recommend you to create a new S4 warehouse for yourself instead of using an existing warehouse number so you will have full control of the warehouse settings. We will soon see how this S4 warehouse is linked with an EWM warehouse code. Next, let's open the Assign Warehouse Number to Plant and Storage Location configuration object that can be found under the Assignment submenu. Here you can see the plant and storage locations that I have linked my S4 warehouse number with. As you can see, different storage locations of the same plant can be linked with different warehouse numbers. I'm using a default plant code available in the system, but I have created new storage locations for this plant. Let's also check the company code that is linked with the plant I'm using. If you have decided to create your own plant code, I recommend that you will link your plant with this default company code that is already available in your system. This will save you some time as all the basic settings for this company code have already been maintained. If you create a new plant, you also need to create a new sales area and then link your plant with the sales area. Here you can see the default purchasing organization that I will be using when creating purchase orders in the system. Also make sure to assign a shipping point for your plant. These are the main organizational elements we need to maintain in S4HANA. Next, let's start examining EWM specific organizational elements, starting from the EWM warehouse number related settings. I open SCM Extended Warehouse Management, then Extended Warehouse Management, then Master Data, and finally Define Warehouse Numbers. This is the warehouse code in EWM that I'm using. You can create a new warehouse code using this New Entries button here. After a warehouse number has been created, we need to define some basic settings for the warehouse. I go one step back and then select Define Warehouse Number Control. I double-click my warehouse number to see all the basic settings. The most important settings you need to maintain here are the weight unit and the volume unit. As an EWM warehouse can manage stocks for plants belonging to different company codes, you also need to define the local currency for the warehouse. 
The time unit here is used when processing timed of warehouse tasks are determined. Next, let's map our warehouse codes together. I move back from this screen and open Integration with Other SAP Components menu. From here, I select Assign Warehouse Number to Warehouse Number of Decentralized SCM System Transaction that can be found under Extended Warehouse Management. Here you can see that I've linked the warehouse codes together. However, just assigning the codes together is not enough, but we also need to activate EWM specific settings for the S4 warehouse. I move back from this screen and open the Logistics Execution menu. I will then select Extended Warehouse Management Integration, then Basic Setup of Connectivity, and then open Configure SAP EWM Specific Parameters Configuration Object. You can see that I have selected Extended Warehouse Management for my S4 warehouse. The distribution model should be Distribution Immediately at Document Creation. This makes sure that the data is moving between S4 and EWM without delays. In addition to these two steps, there is still one more mapping we need to do for the warehouse codes. I go back to the SCM Extended Warehouse Management menu and then select Extended Warehouse Management, then Interfaces, then ERP Integration, then General Settings, and then select Assign Warehouse Numbers from Logistics Execution. It would be possible to map a single S4 warehouse to multiple different embedded EWM warehouse codes. In this case, we would create a separate row here for each of the different EWM business systems. As I'm only using a single EWM system, there is no need to maintain the name of the business system here. This will finally take care of the warehouse mappings. Next, let's create supply chain unit for our warehouse. The transaction to create supply chain units can be found in the IMG menu, but we need to go back to the Easy Access menu. I select Extended Warehouse Management, then Master Data, and then select Maintain Supply Chain Unit. Here you can see the settings that can be found behind supply chain units. The most important is the geographical location of the unit. I have maintained these business attributes for my supply chain unit. You could create separate supply chain units for various offices related to your warehouse, but there is very rarely any need for this. Next, we need to create a business partner for the plant that is owning the stocks in our warehouse. As we discussed during the introduction session, EWM is using something called Party Entitled to Dispose to determine which S4 plants own the stocks handled in EWM. We will soon see how to assign a business partner as the party entitled to dispose for EWM Warehouse. Let's open transaction BP and check the business partner I'm using. Here you can see the roles that have been maintained for this default business partner. As you can see, the business partner has been opened both as a vendor and as a customer. I select the supplier role and then open the Vendor General Data tab. This field here is used to link a plant with a business partner. New business partners can be created by selecting Create and then Organization. You can first create the business partner using the general role. 
After the general role has been saved, open the business partner in change mode. When change mode is selected, you can open new roles for the business partner. Next, let's see how we can assign a business partner for a plant. From the Easy Access menu, I select Extended Warehouse Management, then Settings, and then Business Partner Assignments. This transaction is used to define the default supply chain unit and business partners for your warehouse. You can see that I have assigned values for the supply chain unit field and for the party entitled to dispose field. This custodian field is relevant when consignment process is used. You can define the default business partner who manages the stocks but is not the legal owner of the products. It's also possible to assign a default ship to party for a warehouse. This can be used in some special cases when products are always sent to a specific party. So far, we have mapped together S4 and EWM warehouse codes, linked a supply chain unit with our EWM warehouse, and also assigned a business partner as the default party entitled to dispose for the warehouse. Next, let's link our S4 storage locations with availability groups in EWM. The availability group basically controls which stocks are available in your warehouse for different processes like picking. I select Extended Warehouse Management, then Interfaces, then ERP Integration, then Goods Movement, and finally, Map Storage Locations from ERP System to EWM. Here you can see the mappings I have done for my warehouse. Available for sale storage location has been linked with goods completely available and received on dock has been linked with goods and put away. Note that you also need to enter the logical system name of your S4 HANA environment. Next, let's check where you can create new availability groups. I go a few steps back and then open Configure Availability Group for Put Away under Goods Receipt Process. Here's the availability groups I've created for my warehouse. New groups can be added using this New Entries button here. The last organizational mapping we need to do is to link availability groups with stock types. Stock types are used to further divide stocks into different categories based on their current status and availability. Some common stock types are, for example, products that are currently in quality inspection, products that are fully available to be picked, and damaged products waiting to be scrapped. Every product in your EWM warehouse always has a stock type. Let's check what kind of stock types I'm using for my warehouse. I open the same configuration object again and select Configure Stock Type. As you can see, the stock types are availability group specific. Different stock types are grouped together using location independent stock types. You can see that I have grouped these stock types that belong to different availability groups under the same location independent stock type. This stock type role here can be used to automatically change the stock type of the products that are moved into a certain storage type. For example, you might have a storage type that is only used to store defective products that will be scrapped. When a product is moved to this storage type, the stock type will automatically change.
We have now finally mapped together all the organization structures in S4HANA and EWM. But before we finish, we still need to check the number range settings for our EWM warehouse. I go to Master Data and then select Define Number Ranges. I recommend that you will just copy all the number ranges that have been maintained for this default warehouse number for your own warehouse. After copying the number ranges, also remember to assign the different number range intervals for your warehouse. In the next lesson, we will start examining warehouse structure related settings in EWM.